So much has been said and written about reverse osmosis water makers that I'm pretty sure most would-be buyers suffer some degree of information overload before making the call. There's a lot to sort through and these things do cost a lot. In this video, I will show you how I laid out my RO system and discuss how we integrate it into our daily operations when on the hook. Of course, by today's standards, at 37 feet, we're considered a medium-small motor sailor, so I want to limit my commentary to this size vessel and not wade into the world of big boat systems. We went with a Village Marine LTM 500. It's a 110 volt water maker that's rated at 21 gallons per hour or 500 gallons per day. So let's look at the install and I'll try to make sense of it for you. We're going to start by following the saltwater flow as it comes into the boat at the through hull fitting in the seacock. I've close coupled this with the saltwater strainer, which is obligatory. Following the reinforced hose, we see it runs directly into a two-way diverter valve called the flush valve. When this valve has swung one way, raw salt water is simply passed along without entering the filter. When the valve is thrown the other way, it introduces fresh water into the system. When the flush valve is used, you'll hear your boat's pressure water system pump cycle on as it pumps fresh water from your boat's fresh water tank into the carbon filter. This feature is used to freshwater flush the system after a water making session. Getting back to the salt water flow, we follow the reinforced hose clear to the other side of the main engine stringer where it connects with the low pressure boost pump. This 110 volt pump must be mounted below the water line to work. Moving on, we see the low pressure pump pushing pressurized water into the 5 micron sediment filter. Here there is a filter pressure gauge to signal filter changes when the reading goes 5 psi lower than with a clean element. At this point the strain and filtered salt water is ready to enter the 110 volt high pressure cat pump where it gets the big pressure boost. Now the black high pressure hose loops up to enter the pressure vessel and membrane rack. Fresh water gets separated in the membrane and at the other end of the pressure vessel you'll notice two pipes. It's important to notice what goes on here because it starts to get complicated if you don't differentiate the two. The bottom pipe only passes fresh water. There will be salinity during the startup, but this will pass in a minute or two. You can measure the flow rate at the product flow meter. Above the flow meter there is another diverter valve called the sample valve. This valve allows you to send the purified fresh water flow one way for sampling and the other way to supply the boat's main fresh water tank. This would be the end of the process if you did not need to do away with the concentrated salt water left in the membrane. That's what the upper pipe does. Here the wastewater exits the pressure vessel, moves through the membrane pressure gauge, and onto the all-important bypass valve. This valve is the on-off switch that runs the whole process. When the valve is open, all the water that flows through the system exits to an overboard dump hose. But when it is closed, the flow is sealed and the pressure builds in the membrane to 800 psi. This is when the reverse osmosis process actually begins. Of course, both the low pressure boost pump and the big high pressure cat pump are 110 volt and require wire runs and breakers. We use a 20 amp breaker for the cat pump and a 5 amp for the smaller boost pump. When both breakers are thrown and we're making water, the draw at the panel is 18 amps. So how does this fit in a typical day on the hook? We like to make water every other day, usually during the generator's morning session. The idea is to top up the batteries while replacing the water used in dishwashing and general use. If there's been swimming and there have been lots of showers, we run another session in the evening when we like to close up the boat and run the air conditioning for dinner and a movie. This session can go on for hours if we have a couple of DVDs to catch up on. Then you've got to remember not to overflow the tanks. I hope you've enjoyed the video and feel it was worth your time. I'm Sailor Sam.